Hi, my name is Sophie Summers and welcome to the Cross-Dressing Lifestyle channel. Now today we want to have a look at cross-dressing and the law. Now I want to start off with a little bit of a disclaimer if I may. I'm not a uh, legally trained barrister or lawyer, just somebody with a bit of an interest in the subject and I've been asked quite a few questions over the years about aspects of the law and cross-dressing in public. So I thought I would just um, dive a little bit more deeper into the subject matter. I've done quite a little bit of research recently and I'm absolutely astounded by sort of the law and its interactions with the cross-dressing. Now I'm going to be looking at the UK and a little bit of the USA um, and aspects of the law in both of those countries. So if you want to find out a little bit more, please join me after the break. So welcome back. So this video was really inspired by the fact that I get quite a few questions even today from people asking me about the law and cross-dressing, particularly when out in public. So I thought I'd do a little bit of research, try and maybe bust a few of the old myths if they are myths. If they're not myths, please tell me down in the comments below because I love to hear you know the actual uh, roots of some of these laws and how they apply in the 21st century. Now the reason why I make that particular claim is that there are lots and lots of old statute laws that have been bent and buckled and uh, misused particularly against the gay community and the cross-dressing community by the law over the years. Thankfully um, not so much these days as we do have a lot of protection in the law. So what I'm going to be doing is concentrating on basically three or four key areas. The first one really in the UK is the Equality Act of 2010 and then I'm going to look at the Sexual, the sexual Offenders the Act of 2003 and how they apply and also I want to take a little bit of a look at you know traveling because I get a lot of requests sort of saying well can I travel in the UK or can I travel in America when I'm dressed so I'm going to take each and every one of those points and uh, work my way through them. So let's try and get into a little bit of nitty gritty and a little bit more detail if we can. Now what I want to do is start off by reading a statement if I may, so please bear with my very bad reading skills. But it basically says that cross-dressing is not an offence in the UK, even under the Sexual Offences Act of 2003, which contains a seemingly inexhaustible list of sexual misdemeanours. That's quite interesting. Nor is it illegal in most other Western countries, though you could run into serious problems in many developing nations. So I think that would establish that in the UK actually cross-dressing is not against the law, so to speak. However, you could face some forms of discrimination and particularly, you know, out, out and about when cross-dressed. So really that leads me quite nicely into the Equality Act of 2010. And forgive me again, I've got to make a little bit of a reading note here. Um, 2010 is the relevant legislation that provides protection for individuals who are subject to less favourable treatment, i.e. discrimination. Now in this legislation there are basically 12 key categories or key areas and those 12 are hopefully listed down here. And I'd like to draw your attention to item three, which is to do with agenda reassignment. Now I'm getting on to a little bit of sort of grey area of knowledge here and also it could be a little bit contentious. Um, with our fellow sisters that are transitioning. Um, so I do apologize if I make a few gaffes here, but this is my understanding of it and reading through some of the papers that I've managed to get my hands on. Now, if you were to say is cross-dressing covered in discrimination by the laws of this Equality Act of 2010? No, it's not. However, and this to me is a very interesting point, it says, quote, unquote, um, it, but if you are thinking of transitioning in the future, and I quite like that word, if you are thinking about it, then you would fall within the bracket of gender reassignment. So although it doesn't actually cover cross-dressing, it does actually cover you if you are thinking about it. 
So I find that quite interesting, which goes to demonstrate that the law is very flexible and uh, can be used in your favour if you have the knowledge, so to speak. So that really, that legislation here within the UK covers any form of discrimination. So that's a very good thing the law covers us in that particular aspect and I find that very refreshing. So I think we can clearly see there that in the UK it is not against the law to cross dress and if you feel as though you're discriminated against in any way there is some legislation in place to offer you some protection. Now I'm not overly sure of the laws as they apply in the USA regarding cross-dressing. I do know from the limited research I've done that uh, probably New York is the most liberal and most protected for cross-dressing and transgender people in the States. If I am wrong, please correct me by dropping me a note down below. I am fascinated by the history, um, particularly of Stonewall and also some of the uh, old laws that were in place in America to actually positively discriminate against cross-dressers um, and a lot of this goes back to even the 1800s um, where they sort of bent the laws to be able to use and discriminate against cross-dressing so I'm not going to go into great detail there the only thing that um, I will go into any sort of detail with is the actual TSA regulations when it comes to traveling in the US. So let's have a little look at the situation of travel within the US and also the UK and Europe when cross-dressed. Uh, the first thing I need to say is that um, it is not illegal in any way to uh, travel or cross-dress, but it does have a few, how would I say, unique sets of challenges and considerations. And they are primarily that your passport is probably in your mail guise, and uh, when you turn up at the airport security, your picture is not going to represent the picture that is in your passport. However, that is not a major issue. And I will go into that in a minute. But the other consideration also is when you're going through security is if you're wearing a silicon breast forms, they are more than likely going to trip the security system in one way or another. So how do we get over these things? Well, um, all passports um, have a unique identifying code in them. So with the exception, I think it is of India, Canada, and uh, New Zealand that use an X for the particular um, digit in the identification code, the people on security and on passport control would know whether you were male or female without even looking. So that's one issue that the transgender community are trying and vigorously working on to get that unique identifying code in passports and uh, documentation to be removed. But um, I digress. Now, um, the thing is that um, there are a lot of people in security that are specifically trained to deal with cross-dressing and transgendered people. The TSA in the US have a whole load of regulations and guidelines for their staff with dealing with cross-dressers and with transgendered people, whereby you can, should you wish to have a pat down rather than go through security and set the alarms off, they will take you aside and they will do that discreetly and they will do that also in the UK. But I must admit that the UK are a little bit behind, I believe, the US in this particular practice. Um, I know it's a practice that's reasonably um, followed throughout Europe, but if I was traveling in the Middle East or certain parts of Asia, I certainly would not for my own safety travel whilst cross-dressed. So in summary of that little bit there, you can travel quite freely and you're not breaking any laws uh, if you are traveling across dressed, but there are certain considerations that you should take into account. I would say allow yourself more time when you're going through security and just enjoy the experience. Try not to get too um, wound up about it. I also know in the US they've got a lot of behavioral specialists going around the uh, airports and looking at people's behavioral patterns and I know from personal experience you do get a little bit sort of how would I say nervous and I can pick that up as well but uh, on the whole I never experienced any problems at all.
And finally, I really want to have a quick look at probably the most asked question would be, um, whilst I'm out of dress, which toilet should I use? Now, I want to have a look at this from the legal standpoint, if there is one. Um, these days, there are lots of gender neutral toilets, so it doesn't really matter so much. And failing that, there are quite a few disabled toilets you could use. But in um, my personal experience, what I've been led to believe is if I'm, I'm presenting as a female, then I am better off going to a female toilet than a male toilet. I did have this conversation with somebody who was a police officer once, and they said, well, technically, and old laws that, uh, and statutes, you may, if there was a disturbance in the female a toilet because of your presence, could possibly, and they said possibly, be charged with a sort of a civil disturbance offence, which I thought was quite interesting. And then if there was a disturbance in a male toilet because I was presenting as a female, I may even be able to be charged with a form of um, solicitation, which I thought was very hilarious. Um, so out of those two sort of possibilities, I did ask which one carried the biggest fine or the biggest penalty, and it would have been the one for solicitation. So. I've always said that, that uh, if I'm f uh, appearing as a female, I will always use a female toilet. But as a, a little bit of a caveat to that little discussion there, and the policeman did say it's highly, highly, highly unlikely that any of those charges would ever be brought. So um, that was just a little bit of a, a bit of hearsay more than anything else. So uh, in conclusion, I hope you found the whole um, presentation of some sort of interest. If you did, please give us a good old thumbs up because that helps us. Um, if you've not already um, subscribed to our station, I mean our station, our channel, please do consider doing so. We really appreciate that. And as always, 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 um, please stay safe in this very troubled times. And also, as we always say, stay gorgeous.